Welcome to Programming with Professor Califf. This series consists of videos introducing various topics for people getting started in programming using Java. In this video, I want to show people how to set up the environment I'm working in and demonstrate writing a first program in Java. I'm working in Eclipse. If you prefer to work in a different development environment, most of what I'm doing in this series will apply, but not everything. The first step will be to install the Java Development Kit, or JDK. This must be done before the installation of Eclipse. Okay, so I'm going to pull up a Chrome window here. Obviously, any browser will do. Uh, and I'm going to search for JDK. The reason I'm doing a search rather than just giving you a specific URL is because versions change, um, websites change, so the important thing is to know how to find it. So I'm going to the JDK and to the JDK download, and here look for the thing you need. So I'm working on Windows, so I will download this if you're working on Mac OS, you can do that. There are also some options for Linux, so lots of environments you can use. Um, do you make sure to take a look at the license agreement. Um, it is necessary to agree to it. And we will pick downloads and save that off. and then open it up. And let it make changes. And let it do its thing. Once that's done, we can move on. The next step is installing Eclipse. So let's go back over to our browser and I'm going to search for Eclipse installer. So click on the appropriate installer for your purposes and download that. And we will... Okay, our installation has completed. So let's open that up. And then we have some choices to make. We are interested in the Eclipse IDE for Java developers, since this is all about Java. And the enterprise Java developers goes on to manage a lot of other things. So the for Java developers is smaller, and I recommend that for now. Then, of course, you can decide whether you want to start menu in your entry, whether you want a desktop shortcut. I don't like cluttering my desktop. So then we just install. Okay, so we'll go ahead and launch that. Since the next thing we want to do is actually try it out and write our very first program. One of the things that you always need in Eclipse is a place 
to store your stuff. I happen to use a place called Workspace on my D drive. Do you, you can put this wherever you want. This is where you're going to store all of your code and the executables. So make sure it's a place that you have a little bit of room. If you decide that this is where you want to be and you never want to ask again, you can pick use this as default. I use multiple workspaces, so I don't do that. So let's launch Eclipse. And then it'll take a minute, of course, for the program to come up. Once it has, you probably have a window right here, uh, which I don't have because I've used this workspace before. If you do, just click on the X and get rid of that welcome message. Okay, we'll start by creating our first project in Java. To do that, we start by going to the File menu, selecting New, and then Java Project. Have to give the project a name, so we're going to go ahead and call this one Hello World. Uh, spaces are allowed in project names. They are not typical, but they are perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and hit Finish. I'm going to say Don't Create here because we don't need a module. Modules are something for managing very large projects, which we don't have in this case. At this point, we need to start creating our actual program. So we go ahead and expand the Hello World project in the Package Explorer. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the source folder, select New, and then Class. There are other ways to create a new file. We can do things going to the file menu and so forth, but this guarantees that the file is exactly where we want it to be. So we're going to call this Hello World. Note that this cannot have spaces in it. Um, it must be a single string, no spaces. It is convention to have it start with a capital letter whenever we create a class name. One thing we do want to do here is to select the public static void main that keeps us from having to type that string. Anytime we're creating a class that is the starting point for our program, we're always going to need that main. I'm going to also go ahead and say generate comments. That's um, optional, but sometimes helpful. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. So the first thing I'll notice is that things get expanded and not by default. This will tell me when I created the program, which can be helpful. Also sets up what we call a class javadoc comment, which is a place for me to just note what is this all about. So I'll usually put a brief description of the program that I'm writing in a program file like this. So simple program to print hello world. And one thing that is always in here is the author. By default, it comes up with what it has decided is my name for some reason. That generally is going to get replaced by the full name. There are ways to configure Eclipse so that it will automatically provide the information you want in these initial comments. So that's something to explore in the preferences under window. So where you do that is window preferences. And then there are some ways to do that under Java and um, code templates, code templates, and then comments. And then I can um, set things up so I can tell it what to put here. If I put it on types, that will allow me to actually say, hey, put my name here instead of user. We have a couple of, notice that some of these comments are green and some of them are blue. The green ones have a single asterisk. The blue ones have a double asterisk. 
Green ones are what we call multi-line comments. They get used whenever we're doing something that is a multiple line comment that isn't a special, what we call Javadoc comment, which are these with two asterisks. And later in the series, I'll talk about Javadoc. Uh, this is basically a way that we generate documentation that can be separate from our code uh, for people to see about what we write. And then the final piece here is a single line comment. And this simply, if you use the two slashes, it will comment out the rest of the line. So that basically it's saying, you don't have to worry about this. This is all comment. So it tends to be used in any case where I just want to comment out a line or the rest of a line. In this case, anytime I have Java create code for me, it puts in this to do so that I don't forget that Java created this, but I still need to fill it in. Uh, I want to talk for just a minute about structure of the program itself, now that I've mentioned the different comment types. Uh, public just means anybody can run this. Class, everything we make in Java, pretty much, is going to live in a class, including our initial programs. This is the name of the class, so that tells us what we're running, allows others to access it. This public static void main string args, kind of arcane. Um, eventually we'll understand every piece of this as we go through the videos. But for right now, what we really care about is that this main means start here. So whenever we run a class, a Java class, which is how we run a Java program, is tell it run the Java class. It is always going to start at the function called main. Of course, in our initial programs, we're only going to have a function called main. So it will just execute that function. And a function is basically a piece of code that gets run together. Okay, so let's delete our to do comment and actually do what we want to do in this program. So this will be a very simple program that's just going to print out the text, hello world. So the way we do that is first system dot, so that's a period, out. And that system dot out is what we call the standard output stream. Whatever we sent to that is going to get displayed on our console right here. If we were running this in a command line environment, it would just print it out after we ran the program. So system.out, and then we need to print. So we're going to use something called print line. If we just left it empty, it would just print a blank line, but we do have something we want to print. So we're going to use double quotes and then the thing we want to print, which will be hello world. Now note that it does have to be double quotes. Some languages use single quotes for that. This one, if I try to do this with single quotes, you will notice that this is underlined in red and I have an X over here that basically says invalid character constant. So that's saying, hey, you can't do that. And what that means is this holds a string which can be a bunch of characters but single quotes must hold a single character, a single letter or number or symbol, or space or whatever it might be. So let's get rid of our error. By the way, don't be afraid to try things out. Really important, if you actually wanna to learn to program, you gotta try things out, you gotta be willing to make mistakes. It's just not possible to learn this without trying it. So let's run this. We can do that in several different ways. One way would be to actually right click on it, come down to run as, and choose Java application. Another approach is to go to the run menu, and we can pick run, which might run the right thing. We can pick run and also pick run as Java application. And we also have a button here 
You'll notice that right now that says run hello world. It doesn't always say the right thing. If it's not saying the right thing, then you can click over here and get something else. But be sure to save before running. Eclipse helps us with making sure we save before we run by popping up this dialogue if we haven't saved since the last change that was made. So we'll go ahead and click OK and the program will run and we see that it actually does print Hello World to this console. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll start looking at variables in programming.